Hey everybody, it's Ms. Bell here from the Science Lab again, and in my video today, I'm going to be talking about taxonomy and one specific way that we can group animals. Now, going back to that word taxonomy, um, what does it mean? Basically, you're just taking living organisms and you're kind of dividing them into groups to, based on different characteristics. Some of those characteristics might be the structure of that living organism, maybe um, some of its functions, or even the relationships with that living organism. So, what I mean by structure is, let's get to the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest part of that living organism, and that is the cell. Well, how is that cell structured or um, made within that living organism? Is there only one cell, or are there two or more cells? And depending on how many there are, we would call that unicellular or <laughs> multicellular. And then where can that DNA be found? Is it inside a nucleus, or is it just kind of floating around um, not encased inside a nucleus. So if it's not in a nucleus, we would call that living organism prokaryotic. If it is inside a nucleus, it's eukaryotic. Now what do I mean by function? Well, think about how that living organism has to gain energy um, by eating something or getting energy by a different um, way. Some living organisms do not eat anything. They have to rely on something to get energy, such as our plants. They have to take light energy from the sun and create their own food. We would call these types of living organisms um, autotrophs, um, aka almost like producers. And then if an animal or a living organism has to rely on another living organism to eat to gain that energy, we would call that specific animal a heterotroph, um, aka a consumer. Different examples of um, consumers might be a decomposer. It could be maybe an herbivore if they eat only plants, a carnivore if they eat only meat, or even an omnivore omnivore, let's try that again, omnivore, if they eat both meat and plants. Us as humans, we are omnivores, unless you make the choice um, to eat one or the other. And last but not least, relationships. How are these living organisms going to create offspring to continue on um, with the different generations to come? So some living organisms rely on just themselves to create offsprings. They almost make copies of themselves. But there are other organisms that have to combine their genes with another gene in order to create their offspring. One of these ways um, are considered one way, and then the other way is considered a different way. And all together it's called reproduction. So uh, let's get to it. Let's start learning about reproduction and that's what the rest of the video is going to be about. So here we go. Ah! So again, the two types of reproduction are either sexual or asexual. When you talk about sexual reproduction, remember you are talking about two parents, one male, one female. Um, the genes from both of those parents are coming together and are combining and then they are going to get passed down to their offspring. So their offspring is going to have a combination of genes from both their parents. But with asexual, that A at the very beginning, just think all alone. It only takes one parent to pass down those genes, almost like a copy from the parent to the offspring. So we know with fertilization, a male gene and a female gene are combined and 
they create offspring. And this can happen in two locations, inside the female body and outside the female body. I'm going to show you what it looks like um, on the inside of a female body. So this might be with our mammals or in plants. So the two animals are going to come together. They are going to um, reproduce. The male gene in the sperm is going to combine and come in contact with the female gene which is carried in the egg. And here I have toothpicks to represent my male um, sperm gene. And here I have a Play-Doh Play ball uh, to represent my female egg. So here is my egg. Here is a sperm. It's going to come in contact um, with each other and this is going to happen inside the animal. I know this looks like she, my uh, bear just got stabbed with like an arrow or something, but um, this is happening inside my female bear's body. Um, on the other hand, such as like maybe with fish or amphibians, this is going to happen on the outside of the body. So my female fish is going to drop some of her eggs and my male fish is going to drop some of his sperm. Um, because I'm talking about fish and amphibians, this is more likely going to happen in aquatic habitats, so where water is, so that the eggs can kind of float around and the sperm can kind of float around. And here you're going to have those um, sperm combined with the eggs on the outside of the body. So it's not happening inside my fish like it is my uh, mammal over here. This also happens with plants where, it, um, where that fertilization takes place inside the female. And when you talk about asexual reproduction, there are different types or ways that organisms can reproduce this way. One of them is what we call binary fission. This is, for an example, if a bacteria cell divides in half, it takes its own self, it divides its own self in half, and then you get two new cells. So it starts with one parent, and then creates two offspring. A second form of asexual reproduction is what we call sporulation. And this is when mold um, releases types of spores. And these spores are known as re the reproductive cells. And when these are released out in the air, well, they eventually will grow into new organisms. Certain type of mushrooms or fungi do this. And a third type of asexual reproduction is what we would say um, regeneration. Take for instance a starfish. If a starfish happens to lose one of its arms, well that new arm is so cool it can actually grow back into that full starfish form. So this is a um, visual I wanted to show when discussing binary fission. So we have our parent um, cell. This is what, um, let's say it's a bacteria cell. And we know it's going to divide itself in half. As it's doing this dividing, it's taking all of those genes in the parent cell and making copies, passing along those genes to its own offspring. Um, so we started with the parent and now we have two offspring. And this type of asexual reproduction is, is pretty good sometimes. It has advantages, believe it or not. It can go so, so quick because you're just making copies. You don't have to rely on a mate like you do sexual reproduction because you do not need one male and one female. You only need the one parent. And 
this type of reproduction can happen in a variety of environments extremely hot extremely cold um, on land in water whereas sexual reproduction um, is not the same and because this happens so quickly because of these copies being made over and over and over um, there are a ton of organisms that can be produced in this way in such a short amount of time and as a parent passes these copies down to their offspring we know that they are going to be genetically identical from the parent to the offspring. So here are two videos I found on YouTube to give us better visuals of what sporulation looks like. The first video looks um, like almost like dust coming off of this mushroom which is a fungi. Um, we know that these are spores being released into the air and landing on a new location. Uh, this could be maybe a log that's on the ground that's rotting, it could be a pile of leaves, it could be wet grass, but if the location is favorable, then those spores will start to grow and start this process all over again of creating new organisms. But look at my second video of um, mold, which is also a fungi example, um, being grown on different food items. You might be able to see mold growing on old pieces of bread or fresh produce that has been sitting out for too long, but the same thing happens. Um, more and more fungus is going to start growing um, within whatever kind of food source it might be growing on. Um, it might look different, it might look like crisscrossed, almost like cobwebs, or it might look um, kind of long, tiny, um, floppy things with knobs at the end, but this is just an example of what it looks like as sporulation is happening. And lastly, I wanted to show a starfish, which is also kind of known as a sea star, um, regenerating. So my pink or red looking starfish starts with six legs and it's going to kind of either lose one of its legs or maybe even divide its body in half. Um, so that three legs are separated from the other three legs. And then after a given amount of time, those lost legs are going to start regrowing. And you can see in these short clips how those legs look as time moves on and a new starfish is growing and forming. Okie doke guys, so that's all I've got for you. So. As I end my video, here's a little dance montage for you. Just remember, taxonomy can divide living organisms into different groups based on their structures, their functions, and their relationships. And by relationships, I mean reproduction. How do they reproduce to make their offspring? It's either going to be sexual or asexual. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.